This is a video about how my nervous system disability manifests in my life. I do not share 100% of the symptoms with other people with the same disorder. I may have some symptoms others do not, and vice versa. The on-screen footage is mostly unrelated to what I'm talking about, but provides information on what the manifestation of the disability looks like. I have been provisionally diagnosed with Functional Neurologic Disorder, FND, by a neurologist and physical therapist. I was referred to the physical therapist by the neurologist, who I was seeing to gain further insight into a tremor I have had for my entire life. In my opinion, FND is a very strange diagnosis. I often casually describe it as bad nervous system, because this is effectively the only answers I have. All relevant electrolytes and hormones in my blood are at normal levels. My symptoms do not correlate with dehydration or malnutrition. I do not have an injured or deformed spinal cord, and an EEG ruled out the possibility of the tremor originating from my brain. An additional feature of my symptoms that fits the description of FND is that the actual mechanics of the tremor are inconsistent. In some other types of tremor, movement is impaired by either over or under engagement of neurons or muscle cells. For example, if the sodium content of a person's blood is too high, this will cause a tremor. A tremor is also caused by low sodium. However, the mechanics of these tremors are different. Muscle cells flex by releasing sodium ions into themselves, so if there's too much sodium in the environment, the cells might flex without prompting, with too much force, or for too long. Inversely, if there is not enough sodium in the environment, flexion might be weak or not happen at all. The former case resembles jumpiness, like when a person has too much caffeine, whereas the latter case is like if the person's normal movement were constantly being switched on and off at rapid intervals, so consistently holding their body in a posture becomes difficult. In people with Parkinson's disease, their tremor is also of this type. So I've described two basic behaviors of a tremor. What I experience is both, randomly. It makes no sense, which is another clue that there is no identifiable physiological cause. Sometimes I fail to move when I'm trying to, and sometimes I move when I don't intend to. It's a sort of Murphy's Law tremor. Whichever one would be worse, that's what will happen. As I said earlier on, though, my experience of FND is not standard. FND can also manifest as nerve pain or seizures, which I do not personally experience. I do not experience any significant muscle weakness. I have difficulty picking up and carrying heavy objects, but this is less due to weakness and more lack of endurance due to the difficulty of maintaining any posture, not just that of carrying something. Similarly, my grip strength is fine, but having to grip and hold onto something is where the problems arise. The footage on screen of me opening up an old telephone is of course meant to serve as an illustration, but there are some adjustments that I make in my daily life that can also illustrate the exact nature of the disability. For example, when drinking water out of a glass or a bottle, I risk spilling because I might take the cup away from my mouth or lean it too far toward myself. In order to counteract this, I generally balance the cup against my face. This also helps me to avoid the secret third alternative, which feels even more stupid, avoidable, and embarrassing, where the tremor simply decides to take over my shoulder and arm, causing my hand to shake the cup like a maraca and slosh the water everywhere. If the cup is balanced firmly against my face, this is less likely to happen. It's anchored. Anchoring is the most important part of how I compensate for the disability. Another good example is in rhythm games. I have a fair few videos of myself playing this or that rhythm game on my channel, and in pretty much all of them, I play with my thumbs. And in those videos where I don't, my thumbs basically go unused, instead sitting at the bottom of my device. If I let my hands hover completely separate from the device, I would constantly be aiming and missing. This might seem like bad hand-eye coordination, but the fact that I can play so proficiently with an anchor seems to refute this. My hand-eye is fine, as are my eyes. My hands are the problem. I used to be a dancer. I took lessons very regularly and had the intention of continuing. One of the things that led me to stop was a realization that some of my self-prescribed goals seemed misplaced. A lot of the training I was doing was in ballet, in which being able to hold positions completely still is a very important part of practice. Early on, it only made sense that I had difficulty holding positions. Of course my ankles quiver when I'm in an LFA. I haven't developed the strength yet. But at a certain point, I was absolutely certain that I had developed the strength, because positions that I had once found impossible to sustain, I could now sustain for minutes at a time. But still, even if I was only doing them for seconds, my joints constantly shook. I eventually realized that the quivering wasn't a result of weakness, it was a result of fundamentally dysfunctional muscles and nerves. 